Good evening guys, this is M. Shanae for Hi-Fi in the Low Light. Tonight, we're going to take a look at the Chord Hugo 2. I'm going to do this review a little bit differently. I'm going to split it into two parts. The first part will be the build, the operation, and the function of the Hugo 2. The second part is the sound quality. It's going to be the sound quality of the digital inputs, the sound quality of the headphone out, the sound quality for the line out, the sound signature of the Chord Hugo 2, and then how it compares to my existing equipment. To start with, let's talk about the build quality. What I like about the Chord Hugo 2 is the weight. When I pick something up, like everybody, I estimate how heavy it's going to be, and it's heavier than I expect. When it's heavier than I expect, I'm going to grip it a little bit tighter, and I like that. I like the sense of heaviness, I like the certainty of a device that's in my hand. What's really cool is not only is the device heavier than it looks, the remote is heavier than it looks. Each of the buttons they click really well. And I like that. I like that sense of click. I like that sense of resistance. It doesn't feel like something I'm going to break. It's not something I'm going to have to mash a couple of times because it's gummy. It's solid. What I also like about the Chord Hugo 2, each of these analog outputs has a little bit of grip. When I put a cable in, it hangs on just a little bit. Let me show you guys. When I plug in, there's some grip. The cables are snug. They're not loose. They don't wiggle around. They're firm. When I go to unplug, it's much the same. Switching over to eighth of an inch, there's a snap. I unplug, takes a little bit of grip. I like that. What I also like is the volume ball. The volume ball is very unique to the cord. I scroll down, the volume goes down. I scroll up, the light changes color. It lets me know that the volume is increasing. I enjoy that. Now, what I am not a fan of on the Chord Hugo 2, These are buttons, and when I touch those buttons, there's some excessive play. These little balls, these little joints, they wiggle around, they make excessive noise. I'm not a fan of that. Over time, the more that I interact with these buttons, that excessive motion is going to be excessive wear and tear. Now here's the great thing. The remote changes everything. Really, there's no need to touch the Chord Hugo 2 because I have the remote to adjust the volume, to adjust the inputs, to adjust the filters, crossover, dim the lights, turn them on, power it off. Everything that I need to do, I can do with the remote. Except turn it on. You actually have to press and hold for that. Now, what I'm also not happy with, the USB inputs have the same problem the buttons do. There's too much play, they're too wiggly. Wiggle room, too much wiggle, I don't like that. Charging cable, same problem, a little bit of wiggle. What I also don't like is the seam that's in the chassis on this unit. Maybe it's just mine, but if you look, a little bit of light just popping through right there. You don't have that problem anywhere else. The rest of these seams are solid. There's no light popping through, right? They're flush. But here in the USBs, we see that the USBs are pushed back, they're not flush, and there's some play. For such an important point of contact, I would have liked to have seen it be a little bit more rugged, a little bit tougher. The other thing that I'm not a fan of on the Hugo 2 is how hot this unit gets while you're operating it. If you're running off the battery, there's no problem. But when you plug it into charge and you run it, there's a lot of heat generated from the charge. Now, I've got a power strip in my house to help regulate things. I also charged it through a power conditioner and it was much the same problem. Seeing as this device operates very, 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 very hot, 
while it's plugged into power, I'm going to strongly encourage everybody use it as a portable and try to use it as a battery operated device as much as possible. I was not able to leave it plugged in long enough to get into desktop mode for the heat to subside. It always stayed hot. Now, that aside, Hugo has given us a nice little user manual to teach us about how to operate the Hugo 2. It is unique. The Hugo 2 uses light and color to communicate. As the frequency of the light wave is increased, the sample rate of the input is increased. As the frequency of the light wave increases, the volume is increasing. I do appreciate that. It is a little bit different. Now, getting back to the operation, getting back to the hot nature of the Hugo 2's operational temperature, um, I'm also not a fan of it as a portable, as something that is going to be in your pocket. This is really going to be a transportable product, in my opinion. This is a product that you pick it up, you pull it out, you power it on, you plug in, you set it down, you listen to your headphones through the jack. The problem that I have with it is all of these buttons are top mounted. These are top mounted. When I have a DAC, when I have an amp, I like to stack them on top of each other. So if I'm using my cell phone as a source, it's going to sit on top, it's going to be fed into the USB, and these buttons are going to be blocked. An example, right? I've got my source on the top, I've got my disc player, and I can't quite get to the buttons. So that said, not really a pocket-friendly device. Now that being said, I also don't understand why Cord included the Bluetooth. Bluetooth as a source is blue. Um, my problem with inclusion is it's situational. When I have a Bluetooth device, I keep my phone in my hand, I keep the Bluetooth device in my pocket, headphone comes out of the top, and I listen. With the Hugo, this is too big. This is too big to fit in my pocket. I've got the cable coming out. There's too much bulk. So let's say maybe I'm at home and I want to listen with Bluetooth, right? If I got my phone in my hand, I have the Hugo 2 probably within arm's reach because the headphones have to reach me. Again, it's not very convenient. I guess the only case that I can make for Bluetooth is going to be speakers. You know, and in that case, it, it may be useful. It may be something that you benefit from. Finally, in terms of function, there is quite a bit of functionality. I've got optical in, I've got 3.5 millimeter coax in, and I have USB in and the power in. Now the quality of the USB was impressive. I found the optical to be very noisy. By extension, the USB was very clear. My USB with mobile was a little bit, a little noisier, better than optical, but not quite as good as USB from a laptop or a desktop. That was impressive. The quality of the USB was impressive. What was also impressive is the quality of these outputs. The Hugo 2 is unique. It doesn't actually have a headphone amp, but rather a series of transistors that help to amplify output from the DAC. So what I found is for the most part, if it fits in there, if I can plug it in, the Hugo 2 is going to power it well. The only instance where it didn't do that was my Hi Feynman AT4. I did benefit from running a line out into my Pico Power. The other time that I enjoyed and appreciated the line out was when I wanted to increase my dampening factor. So with my ZMF icon, I use my left and right RCAs into my Project Ember 2 amp, and I was able to get a tighter sound because of the 35 ohm output of that amplifier. Otherwise, the onboard amp was excellent. Black, good power, good dynamics. It was very impressive. Nonetheless, guys, this has been my summary for the operation, the function, and the build of the Hugo 2. Again, I like the weight of the Hugo 2. I like the firmness of the analog and optical coax inputs. What I didn't like about the Hugo 2's build was these buttons are rattly and the USB moves around. Other than that, guys, it's solid. I think if you're looking for a transportable device, this is going to be something that you can rely on. As long as you're charging it, unplugging it once it's at 100%, running it off the battery, you're not going to have any problems with it. If you would, guys, go ahead and click the like, click subscribe. 
next we're going to be talking about the sound quality of the Chord Hugo 2 in part 2 of this review.